As a person with a very deep voice, I'm hired all the time for advertising campaigns. But a deep voice doesn't sell B2B. And advertising on the wrong platform doesn't sell B2B either. That's why if you're a B2B marketer, you should use LinkedIn ads. LinkedIn has the targeting capabilities to help you reach the world's largest professional audience. That's right, over 70 million decision makers all in one place. All the big wigs, then medium wigs. Also small wigs who are on the path to becoming big wigs. Okay, that's enough about wigs. LinkedIn ads allows you to focus on getting your B2B message to the right people. So, does that mean you should use ads on LinkedIn instead of hiring me, the man with the deepest voice in the world? Yes. Yes, it does. Get started today and see why LinkedIn is the place to be to be. We'll even give you a $100 credit on your next campaign. Go to linkedin.com slash mpn to claim your credit. That's linkedin.com slash mpn. Terms and conditions apply. Entrepreneur's Enigma is a podcast for the ups and downs of entrepreneurship. So the wins and the fails that we all face being entrepreneurs, and how we learn from adversity. Every week I talk to a different entrepreneur with a story to tell. I'm Seth Goldstein. Come with me on the journey. This is Entrepreneur's Enigma. Let's get started. Hey, everybody, welcome to another edition of the Entrepreneur's Enigma podcast. I am your host with the mostest, Seth. Today, I have a good buddy of mine. I've known Jedi for, I think, 15 years or some insane amount of time. Um, he is a local entrepreneur to the Philadelphia area. He is he has even comes with a tagline. How about that? It saves me on trying to figure out a title for this guy. Empowering entrepreneurship through technology and education. So Jedi, when we first met, was running a company called Web Junto. And that's why I learned the word Junto. Hence the reason why I'm using Junto for marketing Junto, the newsletter, because it I like the name. It's a Ben Franklin reference. It's Philadelphia. It makes perfect sense. So Thank you, Jedi, for the for the uh, education on that. Um, he runs two companies right now. One's more the parent company of the other one, but he, he, enough to talk about both here. Open Forge and Startup Wars. Startup Wars is a simulation. Uh, it's kind of teaching kids and students how to do a startup before they actually have to do a startup. So it's kind of like, educate them on it a little bit, which is kind of nice. He is a mentor for the Founders Institute, Philly Startup Leaders. He is a Drexel grad, so he is helping out Drexel a lot and Temple University, and he has helped youth hack in the past at the University of Pennsylvania. Jedi, how's it going, buddy? Going fantastic, Seth. Good to see you. And, and hey, it's always, always fun, buddy. <laughs> it's always yeah, fun with you. Good time. I, I didn't actually realize that uh, that the uh, the Junto, because yeah, that's like that was like 15 years ago almost. I mean, yeah, that's crazy, longer. man. That's that's it, really it cool. A long time ago, you know, yeah. back in the, at the at the Philly Cohab Sohatch, wherever that had the co-working space. Oh, uh, City Coho. City Coho. I'm not even sure they're City still Coho, in business yeah. anymore. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I don't know either. I don't know. I mean, so much changed since the pandemic, you know, but. Oh, everything's uh, changed. Exactly. Yeah. You know. So Jedi is calling in from his office where he has a physical background. Oh, you yeah. Know, yeah. I, I like to Real. highlight that that's an actual background. <laughs> he took the effort to put in an actual background just for the show. So I appreciate that, buddy. He put all the books up yeah. there for the show. He's tearing it down afterwards. No, I'm joking. Yeah, I'm joking. no, definitely. And if anyone hasn't seen these things before, these are called books. Um, they're what you know we used to read. So they're made of dead trees. Yeah, yeah, they are. Yeah, <laughs> I got a bunch of them behind me too. So there you go. So yeah, so Jedi. How did this all get started? I mean, like, we, we, so this, oh, you want to go back to your childhood unless you want to, but I mean, like, how did you first get interested in technology? I mean, because you're a little bit younger than me, but not too much younger than me. So you kind of remember your your digital transplant, not as much of a digital native. So. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I actually got into technology through gaming, uh, believe it or not. Um, actually, my, my whole career was actually based upon gaming. Um, the, do you remember the old video game Tribes 2? Yes. Yeah, yeah. So, so do you remember, like, you used to have to have a, uh, uh, like, HTML and, CS- and CSS background in order to build a clan page in Tribes 2, because they didn't have, like, yeah. Sophisticated, yeah. You know, it was, it was a MySpace software. kind of only a game because, like, MySpace that's where you first learned CSS. Was if you want to make anything in your it was like 
you look at this now, it's like it, it's out of the box. You get a social network. No, MySpace and Tribes too was all about like you need to know a little coding. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I mean, so basically, I learned. You know, I was a kid at the time. I learned, you know, how to code just from like the video games because you know every every kid is interested in you know something. A lot of kids are That's interested my kids in video doing. games. Yeah, That's what and, he's uh, doing right now is Roblox. He's yeah. coding Roblox games because he wants to know how to do it. And he's yeah. becoming a coder now. He's like, I'm not asking me, like, hey, daddy, how do I do this? I'm like, I can't read that code. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, it's actually really fascinating. I think yeah. we're going to see a lot of, like, the younger generation, you know, having programming skills. I mean, even with, you know, chat, uh, like, chat GPT, AI, you know, all these things coming up that make it easier to do yeah. certain things. I mean, you know, it makes it easier, but you still have to put that, you know, high level thought together. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think if we're going to see more crap. Like If you don't, like, write me a 300 word essay on, food yeah it's not going to give you a good answer yeah 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 exactly but you know the nice the cool thing with coding is that like you know there's there's defined best practices in each of the coding languages yeah. and so um you know chat gpt knows what those are you know instantly so when you ask yeah. a question like you know okay how create me a function that can calculate uh the tax rate of something right he will well, do it, it right can do that you know that yeah. piece perfectly and there's no there's no real there's not a lot of concern for uh you know for like the yeah. the uh the legal side of that when you're doing these like these bare minimum functions because you know it's like a it's i did something small Ollie, that's why that's what i did with wordpress i wanted i couldn't find a plugin that i wanted i, I didn't find an updated plugin for making all external links go target blank mm, go yeah okay. and so you asked chat gpt and it, it did it for me and yep. then tell me where to put it. Like, yeah. <laughs> out of stage, I was like, dude, or it, way to go. And then I tried yeah. to have it make me tell, tell them to do something more advanced. It's like, no. Yeah. It's like, here's some references for you to go look. I'm like, well, it's just helpful. But I was like, you're not going to do it for me? It's like, no. Yeah, yep, exactly. Yeah. But yeah, anyway, we, we digress. <laughs> we digress, but we're good at that. So you went to Drexel. Yeah. And CS, BS, BS, and CS. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. Yes. A bachelor of science in <laughs> computer science, and then you say you did a computer engineering minor, as if you didn't have enough gearheadedness in, in the in the major. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's actually uh, I was doing I was um, I was computer science major, and then I also uh, you know specialize in artificial intelligence uh, as a part of like a minor. Yeah. 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 I mean, actually, like these books are actually AI related, but um, yeah, wow. I don't I don't do a ton of that anymore. It's just more like a passion hobby. Um, yeah. But yeah. But yeah, man, yeah, I, you know, I basically, I started out as a kid, you know, getting excited about technology, you know, through gaming and, um, and, you know, I felt that was a great way to learn. So, you know, you know, going to college, I, I went to, for computer science, that was a great way to, you know, get a job, right. And yeah. figure out what I want to do. And then. Did you yeah, ever get I, a job or did you immediately jump into or your own thing? I did. I did get a job. It did. Yeah. You know, I had a couple actually. Um, they, it worked well, I think, from the employer's perspective, but I was bored senseless. I mean, yeah, I, I, I was yeah. never meant for, you know, working in an enterprise uh, situation. Oh, <laughs> you know, well, corporate, the corporate, you did take a special person. There's not many people who can do corporate successfully, I don't think. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, you know, also like climbing the ladder is not something I, I'm interested in. I'd much rather just build my own ladder. <laughs> exactly. Right? So, I like to build your own ladder. I love that. Yeah. So, so you did the corporate grind for a little bit mm -hmm. and you didn't like it. They loved you, I'm sure, because, you know, your head and does great work. And but you're like eh, corporate too, too political, I'm sure. And stuff yeah. like that. You know, and you're too oh, yeah. friendly for corporate. That's the problem. Like, you're not you're not, you're not ruthless. Yeah. Like you have to be ruthless. Smile, because, right? You got a big you got you know, if anyone's watching the video. Jedi has like the biggest smile. I mean, I have a big <laughs> smile. Jedi is known for his huge smile. You know, he lights up a room and he's always smiling. Yeah. Not good for corporate. Yeah. Not good for corporate. Why are you smiling? We're down 15 points on the stop price. <laughs> because I'm happy I'm here. Oh, yeah. So so you left corporate and then you started up Web Junto. Yep. Yep. I started my first. Is. Well, actually, first I, I actually went out to the West Coast. And oh, I worked yeah. for a startup out there. Um, you know, that startup. For Shadow. Uh, yeah, yeah. That, that startup uh, failed miserably. Uh, it actually was like a Tinder swindler type uh, uh, situation oh. where the founder fled the country and everything. <laughs> it, absolutely crazy. Wow. Yeah, it was. Uh, and, and that's a whole story on its own. We only had time for it. Um, but yeah, you know, like needless to say, like, 
he ripped off um, myself, you know, our investors and that kind of thing. And yeah, you, uh, so you cut your teeth in the startup world. Everyone has to get yeah. taken for something at some point. Unfortunately. Yeah, 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 that's a good point. It, it taught me a lot, um, you know, and uh, mm-hmm. and I, I got to learn a lot, you know, from working out, you know, out there about you yeah. know just like Silicon Valley and you know startup industry. Um, yeah. So it was, it was a helpful experience uh, in many ways. I mean, sometimes the best way to learn is you know to get burned and then you know figure out you know what hurts, right? So I exactly. figured out what I didn't want to do, and then yeah, I started my first business, uh, Web Junto, with Liz. Uh, that went really, really well. Uh, we built it up to a multi-million dollar business. Yeah. And, and then, uh, yeah, when, when me and uh, Liz split, you know, I took over operations under uh, OpenForge. Uh, yeah. took, you know, and, and that that went fantastic. We still have OpenForge to this day and uh, build mobile applications. And it's been, it's been great. Yeah. And then you, and then you have, then you, of course, you know, you're not, you're not satisfied with just one project. I mean, I'm, I'm joking and kind of being sarcastic about it. Yeah. I'm like the ultimate person who was like five projects, how they sleep kind of thing. But like, you're not doing startup wars, which is really cool. Tell us a little yeah. bit about that. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I guess I'll, I'll rewind for a second just yeah. to talk about the, the transition, because I think if any founders out there have a services company, um, you know, there's, often you'll see like founders of services companies, uh, you know, it's relatively easy to make money in a services company, but it's not scalable. It's not like a a very scalable business. And a lot of founders, you know, like like find that after a while. Um, So, you know, basically what happened was me and the team, we got together at one of our company retreats uh, under with OpenForge and we took a look at our books. We took a look at, you know, our pipeline. We took a look at, you know, our vision. We said, Hey, well, Hey, things are going really, really well. Um, you know, we're making our customers a ton of money, right? You know, and this is in the mobile app uh, industry, the mobile app yeah. space. And, uh, you know, this is fantastic, but how do we scale it, right? You know, and what do we want to do next? And so the team, you know, we decided as a group, we said, well, you know what? We had been doing the Philadelphia Junto. Uh, we yeah. had been piloting out this idea of Startup Wars, you know, like a, a, a way, a game for, to teach people about entrepreneurship and how to start a yeah. business. And we said, you know what, why don't we just create this? Like, why don't we do it? It doesn't seem to be competing with any of our current customers. Um, you know, it's, uh, yeah. it's a game and typically we do, you know, like enterprise, you know, uh, HIPAA compliant applications, that kind of yeah. thing. Um, so it, it just seemed like a win. And so we took that, uh, that leap. Uh, mm. And we had a big roller coaster <laughs> along the way. So oh, you have to. It's entrepreneurial enigma, right? Exactly, right? Yeah. So and so, yeah, Star Wars so... is a is it's a simulator essentially. It's teaching people how to do a startup with less risk, essentially. Uh, yeah, that's correct. Yeah. So uh, you know, like you said, it's a it's a simulation platform for entrepreneurship. You know, for basically uh, what we do is we take different types of businesses, like a restaurant, a food truck, a, a services company, uh, you know, a tech company, and we put them inside, you know, an actual you know, gameplay setting uh, for students who are trying to learn how to create their own business so they can learn by doing. Um, because and, not you... scr- and screw up carefully. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I, oh, wish, yeah. I wish that was around when I was starting my business. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah. You know, it's actually been crazy because when we took a look at the space, we didn't really see anything that had education at the forefront. We saw games. There was a ton of startup games. Yeah. Right. But, you know, they're going to be games where like you just like, click a bunch of times. Right. OK. Hey, you know, I can now win. Right. Ch- it, ch- was, um, it, was it called Chore Core or something like that? Uh, yeah, there, you chore, that. Chore, or chore games where you kind of like you run a restaurant and you click, you have to go get the, this there. Yep. It's nothing. You don't see the books. Yeah, exactly. You don't see the books. You know, it's not it's not scheduled or structured from a learning objective perspective. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, there's a lot that goes into the curriculums that, you know, higher education and high schools create, uh, you know, for students that just doesn't exist in the current you know gaming industry. So basically what we've done is we said, OK, let's take some of the best practices of the gaming industry and some of the best practices of the education industry combine them together. Uh, and yeah, and it's been working out really well, actually. <laughs> yeah. Well, hey, oh, yeah. You're, you're on to something. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. We your little are. sub, your little sub startup is blossoming. We're going to take a quick break here from our sponsors and get right back to the show. As a person with a very deep voice, I'm hired all the time for advertising campaigns, but a deep voice doesn't sell B2B. And advertising on the wrong platform doesn't sell B2B either. That's why if you're a B2B marketer, you should use LinkedIn ads. LinkedIn has the targeting capabilities to help you reach the world's largest professional audience. That's right. 
over 70 million decision makers all in one place. All the big wigs, then medium wigs. Also small wigs who are on the path to becoming big wigs. Okay, that's enough about wigs. LinkedIn ads allows you to focus on getting your B2B message to the right people. So, does that mean you should use ads on LinkedIn instead of hiring me, the man with the deepest voice in the world? Yes. Yes, it does. Get started today and see why LinkedIn is the place to be to be. We'll even give you a $100 credit on your next campaign. Go to linkedin.com slash mpn to claim your credit. That's linkedin.com slash mpn. Terms and conditions apply. Hey, creators, podcasters, and brands, if you work on Instagram at all, you have to be tired of the limitations of link in bio. Well, there's a solution. Stampede.social is the ultimate Instagram tool that will change the way you engage with customers, fans, and followers. With Stampede.social, you go beyond a single bio link and instead slide into your fans' DMs. Fire off an automated direct link to wherever you want to send them straight from your posts and lives. This link is only sent to the fans who ask for it, so you'll know exactly who loves your content the most. And Stampede.Social does so much more. It gives you back the power of knowing who is engaging with you. It makes it easy to engage with them using AI. And using Stampede.Social gives you insights about how your Instagram profile is performing with super robust reports. Drive more clicks, more sales, more followers, and have more time to do what you really love, creating that amazing content. Join the ranks of the world's savviest Instagram creators who already trust Stampede.Social. It's a true game changer and will transform the way you connect and engage with your Instagram fans forever. Just for you creators, use our limited time exclusive promo code MPN50. That's MPN50 and get 50% off any monthly or annual subscription tier at checkout. Are you ready to create a stampede of fans back to your content? Don't miss out on this special deal. Head over to Stampede.Social. Yeah, it is. It definitely is. Yeah, we've uh, we've had um, I think close to ten thousand students now. Oh wow! Uh, yeah, so I remember when you were just launching this sucker. Yeah, yeah. You know, and the crazy part is we weren't even intending to go to ed tech first. We actually intended to go to consumer first. We built yeah. this as a mobile app first. Yeah. And then when we got when COVID hit, you know, the educators they were saying, "Hey, we really need a way to engage, you know, asynchronously, digitally yeah. online." So we said, all right, we can pivot, you know, we'll try it out, but it was still a mobile app. And then finally, when we kind of got to the point where we kind of perfected the, the gameplay uh, core loop, yeah, the, uh, we were ready to be used in a couple of you know, big universities like, uh, like Ohio State University. Yeah. And then all of a sudden we realized, well, crap, when you have a state university uh, wanting to you know, use your actual product, uh, there's a lot of restrictions uh, and there's a lot of uh, like, you know, kind of like red tape, but, you know, put important, like, important uh, qualifications you have to hit. One of them was access for all the students. Now, what oh, we didn't right. realize. Not every student has a mobile phone. Exactly. Yeah. Or, you know, so, so yeah, we, we found that maybe like 5% or less of the students, uh, they weren't able to actually do the assignment, which at that point, the, at that point was like extra credit assignment, you know, so yeah. an optional assignment. But still, um, but we, if they wanted to yeah. do it, you know. Exactly. So all of a sudden we had to pivot the entire platform in order to, you know, to like adhere to this, this uh, new requirement by the customer base. And uh, that was a, that was like a, a huge transition. Um, took a, took us over a year to basically pivot from mobile to, to web fully. Um, but, wild. but yeah, we were able to do it. And uh, luckily we used, um, well, I, I know, you, you know, we, we build a lot of Ionic applications. Yeah. And so since we were using Ionic, it was already a PWA, a progressive web app out of the box. And so um, well, we helpful. were able to, yeah. yeah, we were able to basically put the, the mobile view right on web. And then like, it wasn't, it didn't look nice. It wasn't pretty. And it functions while you go out the rest. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So yeah, I so like that. that. That's see, that's thinking. That's thinking outside the box. It's pivoting. That's growing. It's feeling fast. Yeah. Succeeding fast. All that good stuff. And that's the key. So here's yep. a question for you: What is the best thing about being an entrepreneur in your mind? I think it's the freedom to create and inspire. I mean, you know, like like when I see, well, from a creation standpoint, like for just you know me personally, I mean, I love the freedom of it. Right. Yeah. That's a lot of work. I mean, you've had your business for years. It, you know, we sometimes we're there 16 hours a day on the weekends, you know, we're called. It doesn't matter. You have to be there. But uh, the the cool part is just being able to, 
you know, to kind of have a vision and just, and just build it, you know, build something new, uh, especially something that impacts people in a positive way. Um, you know, I, at the end of the day, I always tell people, I don't have the cure for cancer. I don't have the, the solution to global warming, but if I can help a student who does, you know, is an engineer mm -hmm. or is, you know, doing those things, if I can help them be a better business person, right. And understand yeah. these mechanics about launching their business, then, Hey, we've, we've helped them, you know, save Love the world it. to do something yeah. else, you know? So, yeah. Um, so what's the scariest thing? What keeps you up at night? Oh, the anxiety, man. Definitely <laughs> the anxiety. <laughs> yeah. You know, not knowing like, Hey, you know, what's going to happen tomorrow? Uh, you know, is, is something going to go wrong in the next build? Um, is, you know, like how did you back it up first? All that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. You know, did we hit our, the correct, demographic does the demographic respond in the right way yeah i always uh, tell people and i always give this advice which is as you're building out your product or even before you're building it out you should really try to create a community around what you're doing yeah. right and so that helps to offset that risk a little bit but even when you do create a community right you know how they end up using it is yeah. probably going to be a little bit different in practice than when you're like surveying them, when you're talking with them. Mm -hmm. And so that can cause challenges as well. So yeah, I'd say just the anxiety of the unknown. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. it. So, so what's the most important thing to carry with you all the time? Carry with you all the time. Ooh, that's a good question. Isn't that a good um, one? I would say, I think, I think having some stability in your life, like because you're talking as an entrepreneur, right? As an entrepreneur, as yourself, yeah. what's important to you to carry? Yeah, yeah. I think, I think carrying stability behind the scenes is really mm -hmm. important. I was actually just talking with my uh, with my wife Madonna about this. We had a really good conversation about this. Um, you know, the the like it, when you're in a corporate job, right, or when you're just in a job, things are laid out for you. When you go to work, you generally know what to expect. Now, maybe. In the day-to-day -day operations, like, yeah. okay, you know, surprises come up and X, Y, Z, but someone mm. has laid the vision out for you, right? And entrepreneurship is different. You're paving the path and there, no one can see more than five feet in front of them. And so that creates so much instability there, which leads to the anxiety. I find that it's really important to have a lot of stability at home. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You know, because, yeah. Because that way, when you go home, it's not as, uh, how we call it like it, it it's not like you're going from one unstable place to another unstable place yeah it doesn't um, help exactly yeah i like for me personally uh, i have a pretty regimented routine um you know i i work out every day everything has like a like a time and a place um i try to you know structure stuff at home well be well organized um it helps to kind of counteract the chaos at work yeah um, so there's no I, idea exactly work is chaotic home should be kind of zen yeah yeah. So Jedi, where can people find you online? Where's your big watering hole? LinkedIn? Yeah. Yeah. I'd say uh, for, for content more related to like education and technology mm -hmm. uh, would be LinkedIn uh, for more like software and just technology uh, mm -hmm. would be Twitter. Yeah. Or I guess or X, or oh, X or whatever yeah, the hell X you want to call it. Yeah. <laughs> for yeah. The, the, the artist formerly known as Twitter. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you know, I'll tell you what, it was so weird. Like the first morning I woke up, I didn't see that they had like rebranded. And so I just type in Twitter on my phone to pull up the app. And then all I see is this X come up and I'm like, they could delete it. Like what happened? Yeah, but yeah, but I, we can go into the whole nother story. We can go into branding app and how you don't do it. <laughs> I know. Yeah. I mean, if you can change the name. Great. You lost all the, uh, the equity in the name, branding name, whatever, but yeah, do yeah. it fully. Yeah. Don't have, don't have to, they still, you go to twitter.com and it takes you to, oh, whatever. Yeah. That's all another story. So, Jedi, thank you so much for being on the program. This has been so much fun. We'll have to do coffee in real life soon. Yeah, yeah that has be been great. so much fun, buddy. I, I'm so glad I got you on. Yeah, no, it's great to be here. Uh, thanks for having me. And uh, yeah, yeah, feel free to, for anyone who's watching or listening, uh, please reach out. Always happy to have a chat and give advice or, or receive advice, you know, because I'm learning something new every day as well. So, that's okay. Absolutely. Yeah. We'll see everyone next time. Awesome. Thank you. That was a great show. If you're enjoying Entrepreneurs Enigma, 
Please review us in the podcast directory of your choice. Every review helps other podcast listeners find our show. If you're looking for other podcasts in the marketing space, look no further than the Marketing Podcast Network at marketingpodcasts.net. Goldstein Media hopes you have enjoyed this episode. This podcast is one of the many great shows on the MPN Marketing Podcast Network. You may know you're listening to this show along the Marketing Podcast Network, but did you know there are other great shows on MPN to help your business? Steve Turney hosts a great podcast geared toward mental health marketers called The Boost. Steve, tell listeners what you cover on the show. The Boost is our podcast, and the tagline is Conversations with People Promoting Mental Health, and that's what it is. So it's marketers, company executives, therapists, and mental health advocates talking about what they're doing to move this industry and this important thing called mental health forward. Amazing. And where can people subscribe? I'm big on LinkedIn, so you can find us there, just uh, slash Steve Turney, or you can find the show at marketingpodcasts.net or search for The Boost wherever you get your podcasts. You heard him. Go subscribe. This podcast is heard along the Marketing Podcast Network. For more great marketing podcasts, visit marketingpodcasts.net.